Blessings in Jesus, friends, and welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of all kings and Lord of lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today we are continuing our study in the book of First Enoch. I will place a link in the description box if you'd like to follow along with us. Now, our study today is going to be centered around the great day of judgment. And so we will be looking at several passages from the Bible. So if you have your Bible open in front of you, along with the book of First Enoch, let's begin in chapter 62 and verse 1, which reads, And thus the Lord commanded the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth and said, Open your eyes and lift up your horns if you are able to recognize the Holy One. That word if is important there because if they don't recognize him in this life, they will not recognize him in the next. He says in verse 2, And the Lord of spirits seated him on the throne of his glory. And the spirit of righteousness was poured out upon him. And the word of his mouth slays all the sinners. So we see the elect one here, Jesus. We see the Lord of spirits, which is the Father, and we see the Spirit being poured out upon him, which represents the Holy Spirit. Right in this text, we see the triune God, or the Trinity. It goes on to say, And the word of his mouth slays all the sinners. In Revelation 1.16, it says, He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Well, friends, we know from Hebrew that that's the word. And so we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in this passage, but we also see the Word of God. And it's interesting that Jesus, the Lord of glory, will not need weapons of mass destruction to annihilate all sinners. He will simply do it the same way he brought all of creation into existence. He will take all out of existence by the very same Word. For the Bible says God spoke and it came into being. And here... God will speak, and it will cease to exist, physically speaking, of course. So by the word of his mouth, he will slay all the sinners, and all the unrighteous will be destroyed from before his face. And there shall stand up in that day all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who hold the earth. And they shall see and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory, and righteousness is judged before him, and no lying word is spoken before him. So the great figureheads of this earth, the powerful, the mighty, the rich, and the famous, on that day will not speak one lying word before him. Why? Because of Revelation chapter 2 verse 18, which says he has eyes like unto a flame of fire, meaning that all the secrets of men will be revealed, will be open. Nothing will be hidden. There will be no place for excuses, and there certainly will be no places for lies. They will stand absolutely transparent before the Lord, knowing that he sees all things and that he knows all things, and they are without excuse. It says in verse 4, Then shall pain come upon them as a woman in travail, and she has pain in bringing forth when her child enters the mouth of the womb, and she has pain in bringing forth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, we read, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Was Paul familiar with this passage in 1 Enoch? It seems that he was. In verse 5 it says, And one portion of them shall look on the other, and they shall be terrified, and they shall be downcast of countenance, and pain shall seize them, when they see that Son of Man sitting on the throne of his glory. And the kings, and the mighty, and all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify, and extols him who rules over all who was hidden. And as we are told in Philippians 2.10, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For from the beginning the Son of Man was hidden. They will be terrified because they realize the day of reckoning has come. Yet even in that terror, even in their shame, even in their guilt, 
they will bow their heads and recognize that he alone is king of kings and deserves to be praised and honored and worshiped for all eternity. It says in verse 7, For from the beginning the Son of Man was hidden, and the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might and revealed him to the elect. Isaiah 45.15 says, Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, and because he hides himself, Hebrews 11.6 says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Many times through the New Testament, we are told that God has blinded the eyes of many. He has kept them from seeing the truth. Even Jesus said this many times to the disciples. For example, in Mark chapter 4, verse 11, it says, He said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without... All these things are done in parables. They are hidden, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And so what we're being told is that God hides himself, and God being the Lord of spirits has hidden Jesus Christ, and only those who diligently seek him shall find him. Enoch continues by saying, and the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might, talking again about the Lord Jesus, and said, and revealed him to the elect, and the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown, and all the elect shall stand before him on that day, and all the kings, and the mighty, and the exalted, and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces and worship and set their hope upon that Son of Man. Why on that day of reckoning, why on the day of judgment would they set their hope upon him? Well, let's look at what Enoch says. He says they will petition him and supplicate for mercy at his hands. They will beg him, they will plead with him to extend them mercy. Yet they will be judged according to their works on this earth, just as you and I will. And it says in verse 10, some very frightening words. It says, nevertheless, the Lord of spirits will so press them. We see this in Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 41. It says, he will say unto them on the left, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick, and you did not visit me. And they will answer unto him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick? And he will answer them, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Your whole life has been centered around you, and you have cared nothing for others. Therefore, you have cared nothing for me. And so let's look at that one more time. And may it strike fear in our hearts, just not for ourselves, but for others around us. He says in verse 9, And all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces, and they shall worship and set their hope upon that Son of Man, and petition him, and supplicate for mercy at his hands. Nevertheless, that Lord of spirits will so press them, that they shall hastily go from his presence, and their faces shall be filled with shame, and the darkness grow deeper on their faces, and he will deliver them to the angels for punishment, to execute vengeance on them, because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect. They shall rejoice over them, because the wrath of the Lord of spirits rests upon them, and his sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and elect shall be saved on that day, and they shall never thenceforth see the face of the sinners and unrighteous. There will be a great chasm that divides us from the sinful, from the suffering, from the punishment. And though they will be able to look upon us and see all the glory and splendor of heaven, 
and Jesus sitting upon his throne upon the new earth, and all the elect who will reign with him forever. We shall never thenceforth see the face of the sinners ever again. Verse 14 says, The Lord of spirits will abide over them, and with that Son of Man shall they eat. This will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are told about this in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, when it says, He saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. We will sit with the Lord, and we will dine with the Lord. We will enjoy his fellowship, his presence. We will see him smile and laugh. We will hear the testimony of all those who have gone before us. And we will enjoy sweet communion with our brothers and sisters forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Enoch says, With that Son of Man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever. And the righteous and elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be of downcast countenance. How many mornings do you wake up when you have a downcast countenance? On that day, those days will be no more. He says, they shall have been clothed with garments of glory. In Revelation 3, 5, we are told, he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. In Revelation 19, 8, it says, and to her, the bride of Christ, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And so we will be clothed in garments of glory. And verse 16 says, these shall be the garments of life from the Lord of spirits and your garments shall not grow old. They will last throughout eternity, friends. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse two, it says, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And I would invite you to go back and read that again and apply that to your life, because there is a lot of meat in those two verses right there. But look at verse 4. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. The same clothes and shoes that they had on when they left Egypt, forty years later they were still wearing. And yet we're going to wear our garments throughout eternity. They shall not grow old, nor will your glory pass away before the Lord of Spirits. So from this chapter, we see the fate of the sinner we see the doom and gloom of the unrighteous. We see the destiny of those who have defied God. And at the same time, we see the splendor, the reward, the majesty, and the glory that has been promised to those of us who will persevere, who will hold on, who will not give up, who will not give in, who will remain steadfast and faithful all the days of our lives. And whatever pain and misery and suffering and persecution and maybe even death it causes us in this life, it cannot compare to what has been promised us just beyond the horizon, friends. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. These words are so big. They are so grand. They are so far above the expression and the words that we can offer that it seems so often we fail miserably in communicating such truth. And it is for this reason that we rely upon the spirit of the living God to open our eyes, open our ears, and help us to see and hear things that most have not even begun to imagine. How do we communicate such a divine and infinite message to those who are vile and finite? 
We simply speak the word of God and allow it to have its work in the lives of men and women who are receptive and ready for the seed of God's word. We plant, we water, but he must bring the harvest. Keep praying, friends. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Remain faithful and steadfast, knowing that you serve a God that cannot lie. And what he has promised will one day manifest before your very eyes. I love you, friends. Walk with Jesus today. Invite his spirit into your life. Deny yourself the pleasures of this world and love and serve others in ways that they cannot do themselves. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I'll see you on the next video.